Jarrett. So welcome, everybody. We are so glad you joined us today for this month's webinar. It's called All Ears Let's Talk Audio Games. So today's webinar is going to last about an hour and 15 minutes. There are several points during our tr training that we're going to give you a chance to ask questions or comment, but just some housekeeping so all of this can be as smooth as possible. We have an unprecedented number of attendees this month, so everybody's going to be muted until the question and answer sections. If you have a question or comment, please raise your virtual hand at any time. To raise your hand, if you're using Zoom on a PC, you can press Alt-Y when you're in the Zoom window. To lower your hand when you're finished, just press Alt-Y again. If you're if you're dialing in by phone, press star nine to raise your hand and again, star nine to lower your hand when you're done. So this will really make it easy for our moderator to see you at the top of the list when, when she calls on you during our question and answer section. And just one final note, if you're called on, uh, you must be sure to unmute yourself before speaking. So we'll give you permission to speak, but then you also have to unmute yourself. And I'll remind you of that again. Our moderator today is the fabulous Elena. She's fielding questions uh, and uh, doing an amazing job just helping us run this Zoom meeting. So this webinar is brought to you by the Lighthouse for the Blind Incorporated. Uh, our organization is headquartered in Seattle and has manufacturing facilities in Seattle, Washington, Spokane, Washington, Somerville, South Carolina, where we make aerospace parts and all kinds of different products for the federal government. We own and operate Ability One base supply centers as well that are up and down the West Coast, located on military bases. And we also provide contract closeout uh, services for the military in San Diego, California, Redstone, Alabama, and Falls Church, Virginia. So we're nationwide and we're really trying to reach all kinds of people through what we're doing today. Our mission is to empower people who are blind, deaf blind, and blind with other disabilities by creating diverse, sustainable, and meaningful employment opportunities. And we're currently hiring. We've got so many places where we need to hire people. We're currently hiring. So if you or somebody, somebody that you know is blind, please scope out our open job positions at lhblind.org slash jobs. And you can see if there's a job for you. Elena, if you could put that link in the chat, that would be awesome. lhblind.org slash jobs. So the webinar today is one of several exciting new things that we're doing as part of some new community-based programs and services that we're launching over the next few years here at the Lighthouse. So stay tuned for more and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. And please share any of this information with, uh, with people you think might benefit. And one final note, once again, tomorrow you're gonna receive an informational email with detailed notes and relevant links on the apps and services and other items that we'll be covering today. It's a great resource, so please be looking out for that. But there's also a survey, in a, a link to a survey in that email that we would really appreciate you completing. What you tell us matters, and we've already implemented several of the suggestions that, that people have made through our survey. So we really appreciate that if you fill that out. So, hey, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Tim Paulding, and I manage our computer training programs and our Braille literacy programs at all of our locations. I'm located uh, out of our Spokane location, and I also teach orientation and mobility there, too. I've been in the blindness rehabilitation field for about 15 years. Ten of those have been at the Lighthouse, and I've taught both assistive technology and orientation and mobility for most of that time. I also happen to be blind, and I'm going to pass it over to Everett. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. So my name is Everett Elam. I am a uh, assistive technology specialist here at the Lighthouse for the Blind. Before I was that, I was still me, but I was a different me. I uh, lived in St. Louis, Missouri. And before that, I lived in uh, the wonderful town of Little Rock, Arkansas, 
Um, I earned my certified AT instructional specialist, also called the CADIS or CADIS if you're south, CADIS if you're north. They like it better in the north because you can hear the AT. Um, so <clears throat> I earned that in St. Louis where I got to work with both uh, nonverbal uh, individuals as well as um, individuals who are uh, reading Braille and um, using computers on a very high level. Fifth graders can do some amazing things with JAWS and Braille displays these days. So that was a 350-hour internship. After that, came to the Lighthouse for the Blind and um, worked. Uh, I work with our uh, assistive technology training department, teaching people from both the factory floor and um, anyone in HR is entitled to three hours of computer training. So I teach everything from iPhones to Windows, everything in between. Um, so that is me. So our webinar objectives for today are, uh, we are going to introduce the concepts of audio games for blind and visually impaired. Notice we said for blind and visually impaired, not to the blind and visually impaired, because this is a concept everyone might might be coming to new, or uh, you might be a vet. <clears throat> uh, the next is uh, an objective we have here is we're going to share our presenter's journey and contributions to the audio game world. We are going to demonstrate a game, which is heretofore unmentioned, that uh, our presenter created uh, and its accessibility features. We will discuss the impact of audio games on mental health and fostering community engagement. And we will highlight alternative ways to play audio games, including iOS, Alexa, and Blindfold Games, uh, which is another audio games company. We will also explore the integration of audio games into education. We will also encourage participants, that being you, me, and the world in between, to envision and become a part of accessible gaming. So this is very much a webinar that sort of reaches out to you to determine where gaming falls in your uh, your life. So now without further, to pronounce a do or a do, uh, I'm going to introduce our guest uh, presenter. His name's uh, Liam Irvin, and he has been coding uh, since I believe the early aughts, and he developed the first, if not one of the first, side-scrolling games, audio, uh, completely audio games. Uh, for those who might have had some vision before, a side-scroller is a game where you are looking at something from the side, and left is back, right is forward, nice and simple. Um, and Liam is a native of Illinois, either Day Plains or Chicago, depends on who you ask. And he basically put this thing together in high school with uh, duct tape and Visual Basic. Um, the cool thing I believe about Liam, and this is why we picked him to present for us, is that he has worked in gaming. He has his own mental health uh, journeys that he works on, and he's also created a safe space for young and blind, uh, young and old, young and blind, young and old, blind alike to come and play together on YouTube and Twitch. And he'll be talking about that shortly. So so uh liam if you're if you're good why don't you uh introduce yourself well or even I, if you're not good okay well I, I think i'm i think i'm between not good and good um uh, what would that be okay neutral neutral okay so yes my name is liam irvin and uh yeah everett uh really summed it up very succinctly i have been creating games for about 20 years i've dabbled in many different spaces including audio game creation streaming teaching and most everything in between and it's an honor and a pleasure to be talking to you all this evening and i'm so honored you could all show up and we are honored to have you show uh just a quick recap for anyone who is joining us at the last minute slash second alt y will raise your hand in ios you can look sort of in the top right of your screen and if you're dialing in today uh, or tonight, depending on where you are, you can dial star nine to raise your hand and we will have some Q&As coming up. So Liam, if you would, just go ahead and tell your story. Uh, uh, spare spare no expense in the details. We want to know it all. 
Okay, so I've been interested in gaming since I was a wee lad. I've always found the Nintendo very interesting, and video games to me were fascinating. The fact that you could control a game just blew my mind. I thought it was amazing, and so I said, well, how can I bring that to other people? And so as I got older and video games evolved, I noticed that, well, we could enjoy them, but we weren't really contributing to playing them. Uh, I was just more pushing buttons and hoping for the best. And so as I got older, I thought about, well, how can I give back to the community and make something? And so I realized that making audio games was a thing I could do. And so in high school, I learned to program and started building games. And uh, as Everett said, I created the first side scroller for the blind. And it uh, is called, embarrassingly enough, uh, Super Liam. Uh, no, I am not a megalomaniac or anything crazy like that. I just wanted to make a game when I was like five. And so I had the tools and I said, you know, this thing that I wanted to do when I was little, I'm like, let's make it happen. And it wasn't about having my name on it or doing anything. It was about doing that thing, the dream that I had. And, uh, I think it's amazing when you actually have the ability to sort of check off something that you've dreamed of doing. And I don't think we all get to do that in our lives. And so I, I consider myself very blessed to have been able to make something and actually, you know, make something and um, give back to the community in some really big ways. Could you talk about briefly some of the things that Super Liam and some of your other games allow a blind person to sure. do? So I really think that audio games in general, I mean, whether it's my games or any other game allows you to get into a world and it allows you to enjoy an experience. And whether that is, you know, shooting at enemies or we, I've got a game where you collect uh, beeping Easter eggs, kind of like the Pioneer, the Telepioneers Easter egg hunts, if anyone remembers those, that's kind of what it was based on, sort of. Um, regardless of the game, you know, the idea is to have fun. And I believe that games in general allow us to have fun. And it's amazing to me how endearing these games really are. Um, there is one sort of standout story that I always love to tell, which is I never realized how impactful my work was until a friend of mine called me and said, hey, my son is having a birthday and he is sighted. And so, you know, he wasn't a blind gamer, but my son watches me play these games and this is how we bond and, and he enjoys watching and listening to the games could you call him as super Liam for his sixth birthday? And so I actually called him as the character and it made his birthday. It was apparently the best birthday he ever had. And it's amazing how that sort of transcends the game into real life. And, and I never realized the impact that I had on people until that moment. And role models for, younger blind are so important and it's yeah. not a sighted role model it's the fact that you at least for me anyway the fact that a blind person is calling me who is doing these amazing things you know you yeah. you can listen to your teachers tell you do this all day because you're going to need it in college but when super liam calls you that had to have right i wonder what that kid is doing now i don't know i mean i i hope he's doing really good things uh but i i think it's just amazing and it's amazing to hear from people that like we're like yeah when I was younger, I got the game, and that was almost 20 years ago because the game came out in 2004. So it, I believe it's celebrating its 19th birthday in July. So, it, But it's amazing how it, you know, I hear from people that were like, my parents bought me this, and like, now I'm all grown up, and this is what I'm doing, and I really appreciate that you made a game that I could enjoy, and it helped me bridge the gap and actually made me happy and gave me something to do. And, yeah, it means a lot. So could you... Um briefly discuss some of your other games uh sure. what else have you created or other games that have been influential so, um i made a game called super egg hunt which like i said is kind of like the telepioneers uh beeping easter eggs very popular people are still playing it it is a really fun little game it's and it's a really nice easy pick up and play game and i'm a big believer and i love to make stuff that you can pick up and learn in five to ten minutes because not everyone wants to read an instruction manual. Not everyone wants to learn a bunch of keystrokes. They just want to play a game. And in the sighted world, things like Candy Crush, and I don't know what's popular now, but like Candy Crush was huge. Angry Birds was huge. Angry Pigeons. All these, yeah, Angry Pigeons. 
Um, you know, I mean, they were just things that you could just pick up and play. And I love stuff like that. Why do we make things difficult for people? Let's make something that you can play, I can play, anyone with a few minutes can learn and play. Um, I also made a game called Blinded Guide, which was sort of a fun tongue in cheek walk a character down a sidewalk and avoid obstacles. And the, the audio is kind of silly and zany. And, you know, uh, that was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I, I've worked on some other projects that I never really got to finish. I know there's one in particular that everyone wants. I don't know if we're talking about that now or after our demo, but. Uh, last question uh, uh -huh. for this section. Could you briefly speak to the parents, the mentors, um, mm -hmm. people in education who are worried about the addictive and very, very true nature of games? And what would you say to someone who says, I, want, I would love to get my child into gaming, but I don't want them to be a mindless zombie? Well, I think as, as a parent and an educator, I think it's important to put healthy limits on on gaming. And it's important to put healthy limits on everything. I mean, when we were kids, we had limits on how much TV we, we could watch. Like that's, you know, I think, and as an educator now uh, teaching assistive technology, I mean, I, it's something that I would tell people is that anything to excess is bad. Um, so the games, I think, you know, I mean, I think everything can have addictive qualities, but I think putting um, sort of safety margins on that stuff and, and saying like, okay, you have X amount of time to play the game. Um, and also I think it depends on the game. If it's educational, what's wrong with uh, them playing that? They're learning something. Um, a lot of games, unfortunately, are not educational. And so I think that's where some of the problem comes. But, you know, the goal ultimately is if, you know, can you make something that's educational and fun and addicting in a good way that gets people to want to learn? Thank you so much. So we are going to move right into the first uh, clip because we could sit here and talk all day, but uh, we wouldn't like it, neither would you. So Liam, can you set up this first clip and then just tell Elena when to play it? This is going to be the Super Liam clip. Sure. So this is a clip of the first level of Super Liam. I'm very briefly demonstrating how a menu works. So as you move through menus, the menus speak. And I'd like to thank the absolutely awesome Kevin Reeves for doing the voice work for the Cheers. game. Uh, yeah, Kevin's a good dude. Um, so this is a demonstration of how a menu works and the first level of the game, which describes how a side scroller in audio format works with enemies being either front or behind you uh, using positional audio in your headphones. So if you're wearing some headphones, uh, check them because uh, we're going to do a, a speaker test in the demo. But uh, things in front of you should be in your right ear. Things behind you should be in your left ear. Uh, you can hit it whenever you're ready, Elena. All right, I got my headphones on. So this is a very quick demonstration of the game Super Liam, which I have created. And you can find more information at l-works.net. So we're going to take a very quick look at the game and talk about how it works. So I'm going to skip over some of the intro material. But if you download the game, you can get the intro, the game story and all that stuff on your own time. But we're just here to talk about how an audio game actually works and how you play one. So I'm going to load the game up and it is going to play the logo for Elworks. I'm going to skip that and in intro and go straight to the menu. Please choose an option from the following menu, start game. So we are here at a talking menu and on screen normally, if you were playing a regular sort of mainstream game, you'd have on screen options, but obviously that doesn't work for us. So we have to have talking menus. We use our up and down arrow keys to change options. So we have start game. Load game. This would load an old game. Calibrate speakers. This will let us check our speakers. So let's check that out now. Left speaker. That's my left speaker. This is my right speaker. Right speaker. Oh, oh, and we're good. Hopefully your headphones are good as well if you're listening on headphones. If not, switch them around. Exit. And that will let us exit the game. So we're going to go up to start game. Start and I'm going to skip the narrative, but um, you can check it out on your own time. Sandy Surf, Act 1. So this is the first level of the game, and you'll hear music and some background noise. And I want to talk a little bit about what you're hearing. So in the right ear, you hear a blurp, blurp, blurp sound. This is an enemy, and as we move closer to our enemy with our right and left arrow keys, those will move us forward and backwards. And the closer we are to an object, the closer it is to our center of field of hearing. 
So Super Liam is a side scroller, and the idea of a side scroller is that you are looking at it from the side. So things in front of you are on the right, things behind you are on the left. So if we walk forward, we'll walk towards this guy. And, oh, I think he sees us. We better attack him. So we use our little control key there and shoot our little enemy. Now, if we don't attack an enemy, here's one right here. Ow. He attacks me. We don't want that. Uh, here's another enemy type. This is a robotic dog. And these take multiple shots, so they're a little trickier. We'll keep walking. Shoot another enemy. And you hear something falling. That is a monkey dropping coconuts, as monkeys often do. So this is a trap that we would have to time. Let's see if I can do it. Ah, got it. And so essentially, as we move through the levels, we can... Uh, defeat enemies. We have the ability to... Oh, let me get this guy here. We have the ability to jump. If I hit the jump key, I can tap my right arrow multiple times to move multiple spaces in the air. A lot of games, of course, let you hold keys. This was made back in 2004, so it is a little dated. But it also lets us move faster. Whoa, avoid that. There we go. We can also hold our space bar to run. And essentially, the game itself has a lot more traps and enemies. There are things that you need to jump over. There are things you need to duck under. But this is basically how an audio game works. And obviously, this is a game that was written back in 2004, so a lot has changed. But a lot of people feel that this game is historically significant, as it was one of the first side-scrollers. Oh, that was close. So that is Super Liam in health boost. Oh, more health. That was Super Liam in a nutshell. So I invite you to check it out. And I am reaching the end of the first level. I will step on the teleporter, get my score, and I will thank you all for checking out this video. Time bonus, 137 points. Your score for this level was 717 points. Your total score is 717 points. Sam so we did have a, thanks, uh, Brandon. We did have a notification that it wasn't playing back in stereo. Sorry about that, yeah. That is... A okay. I'm wondering if we could link to that resource on our sure. On the resources. I could I could even throw that up on YouTube actually tonight, and uh, we can get that up there. So, the uh, next thing that we're going to discuss is, and please feel free to put your uh, questions in the chat. Alt Y to raise your hand if you're on Windows. Star nine if you're on a phone. Um, somewhere in the middle of the screen if you're on iOS. <laughs> the next thing we're going to talk about is the safe space that I mentioned for. Uh, blind youth all the way up to whoever wants to listen. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's a, a stream that Liam will do uh, kind of whenever you have the time. Yeah. Is my understanding. Yeah, it's usually um, based on when I've got some free time. And this is another reason I think that you want to, con the educators and the parents might want to consider something like this is because Liam does have mods who censor. Uh, there's not a lot of bad language that gets through as we hear in some of the gaming communities, it can get a little a little questionable, a little toxic. Um, but Liam does his very best to uh, cut that out. Um, and this clip that we are about to play on YouTube is of Liam just playing a game and chatting to, uh, to people. And then there is a button um, in sort of the bottom area of the screen if you're on an iOS device that allows you to donate. So this has been sort of a lucrative thing for you is what I'm understanding. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, it a helps. paper route. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it helps pay the bills. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I mean, I've only bought two yachts, so uh, no I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm only on my <laughs> first uh, paddle boat. So oh, wow, so I'm ahead of you. Yeah, no, but um, it's it's something that does it does help, and the support means a lot, and so I appreciate that. Okay, so uh, this next clip is of Liam getting a a donation uh, for his hard work. 
and it is, uh, I believe, someone donating donating like two bucks. You it could, two bucks goes a long way at Goodwill. So let's go ahead and roll that uh, clip number two, if you would, Elena. All that in a few minutes. But what I want you guys to know in a question that I have gotten constantly last year, <laughs> I punched cow. a monkey. Um, is Magnum Hurricane donated one dollar? Magnum press tab two. Move. Yes, press tab to move. We will have to discuss that, won't we? Oh boy. So that that's sort of a way that uh, you know it's it used to be exciting in the '90s whenever you were twelve, thirteen to call into radio stations. We don't really have that anymore. You know, requesting your favorite song. So now uh, kids can go and d uh, ding dong DoorDash uh, Liam or or yeah. donate to him. Um, can you tell us? Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to address anything that I left out of the stream formation? Um, no, I would say that's, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. It's just, you know, it is a safe space. Like, like Everett said, um, I do believe in, in having a place where regardless of your race, ethnicity, age, I mean, to a certain extent, obviously parents, please be mindful of what your children are doing online. This is very important, but you know, more or less, regardless of your age, race, gender, I, you know, we want a, a place where people can come, enjoy games, have fun together, and feel safe. And, you know, not be judged and just feel safe because we have people that tune in that are 13. We have people that turn, tune in that are 80. And so I believe that it's very important to have a space for people to, to come because I don't feel like we have a lot of that. And, and like Everett said, the, the community can be toxic and we don't want toxicity. We want people to feel welcome. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's the most nurturing environment in the world. But what I am going to say is that it is a place that you can come and feel welcome, kind of like Cheers. <laughs> I would sort of equate it to a virtual um, PE class or, or gym class um, for for people who might be a little bit more introverted i know that yeah. certainly for me um being on a game as a young young guy with uh with a lot to say when i was 15 and 16 you know i learned scientific notation on a game from a, a biomechanical engineer who was who was in college and he would just teach me that because my math classes weren't working out for me so um please don't think of this as an addictive thing for your isolated blind child and what should we do if you're a parent please recognize that this is a gateway to new mentors to employment yeah. and it should be used just like any other tool and this is tim here with a comment i just um my sighted kids do this kind of thing all the time and they're engaged in in online communities and different stuff like that but dude this is opening it up and making it inclusive for people who are yeah you know people who are blind to they could live in a small town or really even in Spokane where I am, where they don't know any blind people, any blind youth, any blind mentors, uh, people who are, who are, you know, um, just doing something. So I, I right. just think it's, it makes it super inclusive. I know we use that word a lot lately, but dude, it's so important. So thank you, Liam. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah for sure. I almost for just real. said thank you back. <laughs> well, it's all right. Thank you for thanking me. I mean, <laughs> it, it so just, we are right. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. No, sir. Uh, we are. That's my southern. Excuse me. Uh, we are right on time for some Q and A's. Um, so, Elena, if you'd like to to feel those alt Y to raise your hand, uh, and the other stuff, star nine, if you're on a phone, um, and Elena will call on you. Yep. All right. So it looks like we have a hand up from Mitchell Lee. I am unmuting you, but also remember that you need to unmute yourself as well. That would be Alt A if you're on Windows. Hey, uh, great job. Where can people find your resources? So my games are at l-works.net and then the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we will be throwing, there will be a link in the email that you'll get after, but a nice easy short link is l-e-r-v-e-n dot me slash sub that's not as short as i thought it was going to sound but um it's a lot easier than youtube.com slash you know um but i am on youtube as well so my youtube channel is very active one thing i do every friday morning which is at uh, 9 a.m eastern 8 
Central 6 a.m. specific time is I do a, a Friday morning. It's a chatting with viewers where people can come in and chat and ask questions and talk about what they want to talk about. And I read their messages. And it's sort of like I have coffee with Liam before he starts his really long Friday. And, and this is, yeah, this is Tim here. Th that email will say, thanks for attending all ears. Let's talk audio games. And it'll come from uh, Tim Paulding. That's me. And there's all kinds of resources in there and links. I think we're really talking right. to full of resources this week, right? We are. A lot of good stuff. So. Yes, sir. We have a resource thesaurus <laughs> happening. Oh, Liam, could you spell that uh, address? Sure. So it's L E R V E N dot M E. So it's just L Irvin dot M E slash sub, as in subscribe. And that literally is a one click link. You click on it, it will say, Do you want to subscribe to Liam on YouTube? You click uh, yes, of course. And then, uh, <laughs> and then you're subscribed and you know when I go live. Liam's name is male spelled backwards, which makes me very proud because my last name is the other male spelled backwards. Um, L I A. Yeah, it is. E R V E N. Uh, yeah, dot net, I believe is the other address that they keep. Uh, L dash works dot net. L dash works dot net. Professional yep. here. Yeah. Profesh. So, uh, any other questions? Uh, yes. So it looks like we have a question from Kevin Roberts. You are unmuted. Hello, Kevin. Hey, you guys. Uh, hey, Liam. This is Kevin Roberts here. When your YouTube subscribers just wanted to pop in here real quick and say, I, I, I actually did get a chance to hear a long time ago when you did that behind the scenes along, uh, about Super Liam. And I oh, yeah. just had a question there. I mean, yeah, I actually heard that. And <laughs> you did a really good job with that. Thank and you. that was really. You and the fear and um, you and the fear were like going crazy. <laughs> yeah. So just, just a little background really quick, Kevin, for those that don't know, I did a stream last year where it was about a four and a half hour look at the making of the game. And I played through the game and talked about it. So that's up on my channel as well. I just want to let people know that might not be like, what is Kevin talking about? But it was a really cool stream. Um, so what's your question, sir? Um, yeah. So how, how did Super League even come? Uh, Cause I don't remember. How did Super League even come? To be a thing i mean how did you decide to like a side score made you decide to go side score way oh, that's, even a though really, that's never been done before that's a really good question um you know i loved mario growing up and i loved sonic and i loved all those games and i was like there's got to be a way to make those for blind people and then i used to sit on the swings when i was like nine and think about if i could make a game what would my game be and really that's kind of where it all came through honestly what i thought about is pretty much and what I had in my head pretty much came down to be what I had made. Wow, that's awesome. That is yeah. really awesome. But yeah, yeah really, that behind the really scenes cool. thing was that behind the scenes thing was just awesome. I mean, yeah, I got thank to hear you. The archive later. I'm glad you I'm glad you really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Kevin. And it looks like we have a um call in from a two oh six number. You are unmuted. Hey, this is Nelson. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, for, um, other than what you have mentioned to click on the uh, web, is there a um, app? How do I download it or what, what is it called from the um, Google Store or um, App Store? So for, um, for which, are you talking about for the game itself? Yes. Um, so the game actually runs on Windows? Oh, so it's, okay, yeah, okay, it's, okay. it's not an iOS game. Uh, this was made back in 2000 before, uh, 2000 before. I like that actually. Let's use that. <laughs> 2000 before <laughs> it was, it was made before. I mean, iOS wasn't even a thing. Like they hadn't even invented iPhones yet. Mm -hmm. So literally all we had what? back in those days were windows. Um, right. was windows. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. That That's a really cool game. And we're going to talk I'll, about later though. We will talk about some iOS games though. Nice. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, asking a question. All right. Thank you, Nelson. And looks like our next question is from Ben. Ben, you are unmuted. Uh, yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think we can hear you. Um, can you guys hear Ben? Yeah. I just was wondering if you could 
talk a little bit more about how you got into coding and if you have any tips uh, for someone who's blind that's interested in getting into designing games. It's a really good question. Um, so I got into it in high school. Now this was 20 years ago. So now there are so many more resources, so many more programming languages, so many more avenues to take. Um, I would say, I mean, for a blind person, I think it really depends what you want to do. But I mean, honestly, what I tell people is pick a programming language and learn it and learn how it works, understand all the nuances of programming, variables, functions, all those things, and figure out what you can do and carve your own niche uh, or niche. Either or. I don't know. Is it, ever, is it niche or niche? Uh, I think it's like Cadis and Caddis. I think it just... Oh, okay. Uh, I thought yeah. they maybe meant two different things. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah. All so right. That's, I mean, that's what I would do. Hopefully that, that helps. And, uh, you know, I mean, that would be my suggestion. Uh, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Probably time for one more question. We got to keep moving. All right. So, Gab, you are unmuted. And don't forget to unmute yourself. <laughs> Hello. Um, thanks for presenting this today. Um, and I was wondering, you said you, you achieved your dream by creating the game. What, what's the next dream? Like, where do you see the future of this? Or if you had the unlimited resources to do so, what would be the oh. next project? Um, that's really great because I did want to talk about that. I almost feel like you were prompted to ask that, but I know you weren't, but that's an awesome. So my, my dream, I'm working on a game called Brain Station, and it is something that I think people are going to adore. It is a collection of word, math, and logic games. And so I talked about, you know, wanting to make something that is both educational and fun and addicting. And that's what I'm trying to build. Uh, I'm going back actually and working with educators to make this thing as fully complete as I can. Uh, I'd love to do, in fact, something that I'm working with is how to do some typing lessons and some things that we can use in schools and as ATIs. So I, I think I mentioned briefly at the top, if I didn't, um, I'm actually going in to the field of teaching assistive technology. And so I'm actually finding that there are needs for things that we don't currently have. So I'd like to build those and help people learn computers and achieve their goals. And I, I think where keyboarding is concerned, like ad adults, um, it's very hard, difficult, challenging for me as an educator to put an adult in front of the solutions for typing that are currently out there and ask yes. them to go through 69 lessons or 72. Yeah. Um, these are, they're not very flashy. And in this ADHD culture that we have now, this squirrel culture, uh, you, you don't really get to not be flashy and poppy and have sounds and things yeah. going. Um, and I think that's kind of the direction you're, you're leaning is like, I mean, if we, we had another two hours, I could talk about brain station for like two hours. Cause I adore this thing. But yeah. it just we don't have that time, and I wish it's, we did. It's a but menu based interface. It's super okay. So we're amazing. gonna move. We're yeah. gonna move it, move it, uh, <laughs> because Tim likes to move it, move it. Uh, moving on. Yes. So uh, we are going to yep, keep your ahead. everybody can keep keep your hands raised, and we'll we'll get to the next person in line after the next section. And if you have another question after the next section, uh, just uh, raise your hand then too. Thanks, Everett. Awesome. The next thing we're going to talk about is something very important to all of us, and uh, luckily it's been gaining traction, and that is the topic of mental health um, and inclusion and social isolation, uh, particularly for uh, blind and uh, deafblind individuals. So if you live out in the middle of nowhere, um, your mental and you are isolated, you know, that humans are social creatures. So we're going to talk about uh, some of the stats related to that. Uh, and so, we're going to talk about the participation yeah. of blind and visual impairment in gaming. I'm reading my notes. Go for it, Liam. Oh, sorry. 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 I thought you were done. Not at there all. Was this, there was this pause and I was like, oh, he's ready for me. No, um, that was my internet. So I want to, th I want to hit you guys with a stat. So did you know, this is a fun stat. Also, I would like to thank Aaron Spelker, uh, who wrote this article for Pocket Gamer. Also creates a fantastic resource called Mobile Accessible Gaming. Uh, it's a, currently a Facebook page, but I think he's looking at doing a blog, which he should. Um, 
So individuals with acute visual impairments are three times more likely to suffer from anxiety and depression than those without visual impairments. And one of the reasons for that, and one of the huge reasons that kind of Everett brought up is social isolation. So this is from a lack of purpose, uh, inadequacy, and challenges in making social connections. So what I do believe, and it kind of stems to what I said earlier, that like we are very isolated at times. And so part of what I do, whether it's making games or streaming, is to try to help break down that isolation and, and have a place for people to go. And uh, that's super important to me. And that's really one of the big reasons that I made games was to try to help with, with that. Because, you know, I felt isolated as a kid. I was the only blind person in the school district. And so I didn't have any friends. And so, yeah, it was isolating. And so I dealt with depression and anxiety and it, it was a struggle. But uh, I wanted to give back to the community and, and hopefully help others have better lives and feel better about themselves. Let me pose an idea here. If you have a blind person in an isolated situation who does not have support, like um, so, so, like so many are lucky to, they're going to reach for what makes them feel good. A typical someone who's unemployed or someone who might be on SSI um, and who can see might go out to a bar with friends. They might, right. you know, have a, a cold one with, with their friends. But if someone doesn't have resources to obtaining those feel good things, they're going to turn to stuff that doesn't lead to good feelings ultimately. And no. so these games really create this cool safe space not as a yeah. buzzword but as a like a a security blanket so that that doesn't happen and that's no. so critically important all right rant over <laughs> <laughs> no but i w i would agree with that 100 uh, percent. i i do think that we are are seeing that more and more now there is so much more social social isolation and obviously i mean the pandemic didn't help with that but still like it's it's a thing and and gaming is is huge for that and I think we're in a really good space now where we are not only playing games that like are designed for us, but we're now starting to sort of venture into the actual mainstream community. So the next, are you good with your, uh, your mental health tangent? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to uh, now briefly discuss how I encountered uh, Liam's stream for the second or third time. It was 2020. I was working through my hiatus and uh, COVID was raging on a huge, huge, huge scale. Um, and I was living in the middle of nowhere. I was an isolated person working on uh, assistive technology stuff and I didn't have much time for uh, too much else. And I was falling into some bad habits. And then I listened to uh, Liam's stream uh, which we're about to hear uh, a very, very historical clip. So in 2020, uh, Sony and a bunch of amazing individuals uh, made The Last of Us 2, which is a post-apocalyptic uh, PlayStation 4 game accessible. This game has a screen reader. This game has things for motion sickness and deafblind. The menu has been described, the options menu, which it, it just tells you all the accommodations that it has and allows you to set parameters for the game. Um, was described a few weeks ago as a work of art. And this is an historic moment because you actually get to see someone who started playing games and making games from the beginning play this game. Uh, so I went out and I spent a lot of money and I bought a PS4 and I put it in my bottom drawer and left it alone until I got Makatus. And then I picked it up and uh, enjoyed some enjoyed some very hardcore uh, gaming after I after I got that internship. Um, so not to make it about me, but I feel like we respond to what is what is real. Um, so this is a clip of Liam's stream and he is downloading the game. I believe he got a pre-release. Um, no, it's like I, I think this is just this was like the actual release. Gotcha. So this is sort of the last 10 seconds of that amazing moment when we actually see the first game with a screen reader. And Elena, I believe that is going to be clip three.
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here we go! Cannot use the content. The content has not reached its start date. That's okay. Okay. Because... Text to speech unavailable here. We should be able to do that right now. Full screen. The Last of Us Part 2. Here we go. Buckle up, everyone. It is time. It is time. I, I can't even... Oh my god, you guys. Oh my god. The Last of Us Part 2. No. Continue. They will not put it on... St oh, it's Tech talking! Button. Select. Ah, <laughs> look! Button. It's Reset talking! Defaults. Oh my god! It's just talking! No, uh, this is a PS4 exclusive. I don't think it'll be on anything else. Text to speech on enable narration it's of on-screen talking. text. Text language English. Speech language English. Change the continue. Oh my god! Up directional button. Enlarge. Down directional button. Shrink. X button. Continue. Okay. Circle button. So this is Back. for. I wish it would read that text. Resize the markers until they fit in the corners of your screen. Well, I'm just going to leave it as Continue. it is. Continue. Text would button. Read Select. Text. Circle button. Back. Oh, I didn't trim that well. So, <laughs> can you... The chills came on me, and I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure other people as well. Um, I know when we were reviewing that, you, you and I got pretty emotional. And there were some man tears. That's not true. Can you no. can you describe how that was for you? That was amazing. Um, really, because I mean, to that point, we had had some accessibility to a certain extent, but never in that way where you just start the game and it talks. It's just it's talking out of the gate. It's ready to go. Um, obviously, there were a couple things. So for those that are curious, um, I had my PlayStation hooked up to a capture card so I could OCR the screen and sort of fill in some text I was missing, but I had to do that very very rarely for that game uh and that was amazing that was also day one i don't even know if the patch had come out yet um but it had pre-downloaded the game ahead of time and that's why i was ready at uh, 11 o'clock it just you had to unlock it and that's how that stuff works now you download the game a week ahead and then you have to sit and it stares at you for a week so if you're blind child or student doesn't know what pre-download means, if they don't know what stream means, if they don't know all these jargon things that you're hearing uh, Liam say, and they have a talent for programming, they get to college, they're going to be at an extreme disadvantage. But if they, yeah. gaming is is an inroad into that and that excitement that just- I would lit. say so. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no question. And that excitement that you heard, Liam's voice, my voice, um, and I'd say the PlayStation's voice, uh, is just- it, it's what lights it's what lights so many people up and, and, and it, i it, was excited i that was genuine like oh my gosh like i couldn't believe it i right. just could not believe it oh man so cool so uh let's do some some q and a's all right so it looks like we have a question from dan dan you are unmuted Hello. Hey Hello. Hi, I was just going to ask. Um, so I've been, um, for context, I've been playing your games since, I want to say, 2013-ish. Mm -hmm. And that was around the time, um, it's just before the time you made Judgment Day free. So um, uh -huh. um, I grew up with, you know, your games in mind and, and that they were, a huge part of my childhood at the time. So uh, thank you for that. You're and um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask, um, since you were talking about The Last of Us, the first Last of Us game is accessible now. And I was wondering if uh, 
you were going to uh, demonstrate that. At some you know, point. I I did start that, and then the TV show came out, and without going on a huge tangent, I love the TV show. Just really couldn't get back into the game, but I have played about ten hours of it, and I do like the game a lot. Um, I just got sucked into the TV show, and then was like, I don't want to play this now. I just want to watch the TV show again. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. All right, thank you. <laughs> just okay. laughing at Genesis and chat. The show is so good. <laughs> All right, thank you, Dan. <laughs> and then it looks like we have a question from Mika. Mika, you are unmuted. Hi, Mika. Hello. Um, I just first, Liam, thank you so much for doing this. I've like had the privilege of just watching you over the years, just being amazing. And <laughs> so thank you for participating. Um, you keep using mm -hmm. that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. <laughs> 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 um, I just, I just wanted to know if there was, um, I just think that there's like no better time to be a gamer than right now. Absolutely. Um, when we are getting to see so many like games being made um, accessible, either through the developers or like through mods or what have you. Um, and I was just wondering if there is a game that's kind of on your radar right now that you are just chomping at the bit to did, to play and be did made accessible. Someone set you, why am I getting all these awesome setup questions? <laughs> no, I, no one I did. I feel I promise like you. no one did. <laughs> okay. Because Elena my answer did. is Forza. It has to be Forza. Forza is getting blind driving assists, and I cannot wait. I love Forza. I love cars. Could you talk about what that is exactly? For um, so it's a mode in which that as you drive, you'll get sound cues <laughs> to let you know when you turn. So you can actually play a mainstream racing game and know when turns are coming up and actually make the turns. And the Forza series allows you to collect real cars, so actual like the Jaguar F-Type and the Lotus Elise and all these Dodges and Fords. And they're real cars that you uh, earn and unlock and drive. And oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. By the way, I'm excited. <laughs> uh, Gab said in the chat, a bunch of plants in this audience with the hard hitting questions. I'm, I'm starting to think so, yeah. <laughs> well, they're more like softball questions because it's like they set me up really well. All right, and we have one more question from IPD. You are unmuted. Hi, Dan. Hi. How are you? Good, and yourself? I'm uh, blessed and highly favored, my friend. Awesome. This is, yeah, this is Daniel Perry, and I'm from, I am from Virginia, and I'm the gentleman who is on your streams that chats with you from time to time uh daniel's video gaming yeah video daniel has uh, written into a lot of streams nice to nice to talk to you sir yeah that's you know and you and i have spoken before but you probably don't remember me um <laughs> what can i do for you well my question to you was i, I think it's a, bl a good time for a blind gamer to be alive i've heard that are you looking forward to any of these space MMORPGs like Star Citizen and EVE Online and all. I mean, I know EVE Online's been out for years, but are you looking forward to any of that, even though we can't touch any of these? Um, I mean, from an accessibility standpoint, yeah. I mean, not really. I, I like to watch games. I just don't have a lot of free time anymore because of yeah. teaching and all these other things. I, even though there are games that I can't play, I just find them fascinating, so I do look forward no, to yeah. them. But yeah. uh, I, I wouldn't say as much. It's not really my genre of thing, but I'm still I'm still interested in what's going on. And I'm a big sure. believer. And even though we can't play the things, I still think it's fun to enjoy them, even vicariously Absolutely. through others. Absolutely. I do that every single day. Lee. Yes. I watch videos of Star Citizen, especially. Yeah. And I just sit here and I just. I just inwardly and leave. I and I think people do that too through my channel as well like that they haven't yeah tried yet like they just like to watch me play things too yeah and I'll just sit here and I'll just watch videos of Star Citizen awesome. or Eve Online or something or now Spaceborn 2 yeah and I just watch these things and I just inwardly I mean I'm like blubbering like a baby on the inside because I can't <laughs> play it I can't touch it yeah like, I man, know. I play games like Core Exiles because I love that game so 
Yeah. If we can't have Star Citizen, Core Exiles is the next best thing. So there you go. True. Well, thank, thank you for you your question. So I really appreciate it. Not a problem, man. Awesome. So we're going to move on to our next uh, next level here, next section. Um, and there will be, I believe, one more, uh, one more Q&A here. Leveling up. We're leveling up. That's right. Tim with the with the uh, game credit. Oh, there. dude, get ready! <laughs> I'm learning. Don't hate the game or hate the play. So this <laughs> next section is um, in reference, uh, sort of, to the other the other plant or individual in the audience who asked about other ways to play. That's the title of this level slash slash section, uh, and we're going to talk about uh, some A L E X A uh, gaming uh, as well as as your. Um, A-L-E-X-A being your friendly Amazon companion. And we'll, all, it we'll also talk about iOS and uh, gaming. So the value of gaming with Alexa is that it is hands-free. With your Alexa shows, you have the added advantage of a screen. So if you are uh, hard of hearing or deafblind, you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, and there are a variety of Alexa, uh, Amazon games available. I just Apologies, had to turn country. my. I had to turn mine off. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> I know I'm gonna say it. Uh, there are choose your own adventures, and there are puzzle games. Um, the A Lady is also great for individuals with cognitive impairments because you can micro prompt. You can set a reminder from one minute to one day ahead to more than one day, and it will remind your student uh, to. Do something simple like pick up their headphones in the morning. Uh, and as far as I know, there is an unlimited amount of uh, reminder capabilities yes. with the uh, A lady who must not be named. So it's it's valuable and then it's a hand-free approach. You can also just talk to it. So it's very, very Socratic. You can ask it go west in this room and it will do so you could you could ask it to play jeopardy and it will do so and that's very exciting because we didn't all grow up in uh those typing classes where you just wanted to talk to your girl slash boy slash they friend on your left but you were typing you know we didn't all grow up with that right. and uh so a lady uh allows for that input of your voice so uh, there are multiple input methods. I have harped on that enough. So, El Elena, please play our, our last but certainly not least clip, uh, Alexa Puzzle Game. And let's watch Liam play puzzles. We're watching Liam a lot today. Hi, everyone. This is a very quick demo of an Amazon smart speaker game. Of course, notice I don't say the actual name as you might have one and it might set yours off as well. So uh, to avoid that problem, I'm gonna press the button on my speaker and tell it to start the game. And we'll talk about this game very quickly. This is a game called Puzzle of the Day. It is a lot like the game show Password on television. If you've ever seen Password, it is very similar. You are given a puzzle with five words. You have to guess them based on the clues and then guess the word that the clues are talking about. So because I've played this game so much, we won't get instructions, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to check this out and see if I am smart enough to solve the puzzle. Here we go. Open puzzle of the day. Welcome back. Level 8 Puzzle Genius. Your puzzle for Wednesday, May 10th is now over. Oh. You had solved two words and scored 125 points. Oh. Ready to play? Yes. Okay. Difficulty. Hard. Uh-oh. Word one. Sport where drivers try to correct slicing and hooking. Four letters. What is your guess? Golf. Well, of course it's golf. There we Perfect. go. Perfect. Word two. Part of a hole that stretches between the tee box and the green. Seven letters. What is your guess? Fairway? Phenomenal. Word right. three. Bent out of alignment or engaged in illegal activities. Seven letters. 
What is your guess? Crooked. Nice. Word four. Type of pointed tooth or adjective applying to poodles and beagles. Six letters. What is your guess? Repeat. Word four. Okay. Type of pointed, pointed tooth, tooth or adjective tooth. applying to poodles and oh. beagles. Six letters. What is your next guess? Canine. Great. Word five. Branch or a tree or body oh, part like an arm. Sure. Four letters. Oh. What is your guess? Limb. All nice. right. Congratulations. <clears throat> so I, you I got the puzzle. puzzle. You've earned 250 bonus points for finishing in less than three minutes and 200 for mm -hmm. your remaining letters. This brings you to a total of 1,025 points. that's a lot of points. You now have a chance to guess the puzzle theme. Your solved puzzle words were golf, mm -hmm. fairway, oh, crooked, crooked, canine, and limb. Dog. The theme has one word with six letters. The sixth letter is G. Leg. You can wager up to 1,025 oh. points. What's your wager? 1,025 points. Risky business. Good luck. Okay. The theme so, is one word with six letters. When you're ready, the sixth you letter press is the G. button, or we would say the wake word. I'm fairly sure it's dog leg. D-O-G-L-E-G. -E it's a part of a golf course that is crooked, and they call it the dog leg. Dog leg. 1,025 uh -huh. points for your wager Woo. gives you a final score of 2,050 points. With 2,050 points, you are 849 points above the average. You finished the puzzle faster than 82% of players. Come back tomorrow for the final report. What would you like to do? You can see how you rank, set up email reports, join the puzzle league, play today's power puzzle, rate today's puzzle, play with friends, or set up daily notifications. Stop. Okay, see you All tomorrow. All right, and that is puzzle of the day. So if you own an Amazon branded smart speaker, you too can attempt the puzzle of the day. Thank you for watching and or listening. So I'm gonna blow through these really quick so we have a uh, quick time for the Q&A. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is input for gamings again, but from a Braille perspective, we don't just have Hangman and Braille now. We have at the CSUN 2023 conference, there were several Braille games from uh, the Bonacle, which allows you to have an iPad along with a uh, joystick with a Braille display, a single cell Braille display on it. And you guide your guide dog by watching for the letter and pressing a button to jump over a letter. Really? So if you see it, yeah, you see it's his name is Bo, and it's it's an iPad peripheral, and so you click on the uh, I believe it's the X um, to jump and the the D to duck or something. It's it's oh, very wow. it's very refined, and I'm not explaining it super well. That's on Bonacle uh, Bonacle Games was the title, and you'll be receiving all of these in a resource list. The next is Blindfold Games, um, which is great for sort of your three to eight year olds. It's kind of the KB toys of games. It is um, part of, has been incorporated into the expanded core curriculum. So you have things like counting. Um, the expanded core curriculum is the version of the core curric curriculum for K-12. And uh, so that's very, very exciting that while, you know, your kid could do the equivalent of phonics or accelerated reading games, you can have your blind child or your child who's blind or deaf um, doing the same thing in the in the next seat, and that's through Marty Schultz is is the one kind of pioneering that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to give you guys to talk, time to talk. That will be on the resource list after we reach after we send that to you. Words are failing. Um, <laughs> my check engine light is on, so I want to open this up for Q and A's for the next uh, ten minutes or five minutes, and then we'll do we'll close out and we will all go away to our late dinners. Yo, this is Tim. I got, I got a quick question for, for Liam. If somebody was just brand new to all of this, I'm kind of talking about myself here a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they had an iPhone. Lots of blind people have iPhones. They, you know, they know how to use them. Where could they go to find some games on the iPhone that are really easy? I know you've written some. I know there's other resources out there. Where could somebody get started? 
well, well, Tim, why would you want to play anything else but audio archery? <laughs> <laughs> you, you knew that was common. I yeah. did. I did. Um, no, actually, AppleViz is a really good resource for oh, yeah. mobile accessible games. Um, again, uh, mobile accessible games, uh, which is a project by Aaron Spelker, is amazing. The problem is, is that it's a Facebook page right now, so his game reviews aren't really all organized. But I have to say he has done reviews of, I think it's 130 games now, just a crazy amount of iOS games covering all sorts of genres. And it is a really amazing resource. I'd love to see him put it in more of a browsable, sort of human-friendly resource. But uh, I would say if you are a Facebook user, the Mobile Accessible Games Facebook group is a good place to start. Uh, Apple Viz, uh, someone just said that on chat as well, is good. Um, those are both excellent resources and will get you started. Could you name three off the top of your head or you want me to take that just for people to get started? Three Games? game titles for, for iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely say Dice World is a really great one to, to do. And you can play that with other people. Um, so I would say Dice World. I'm a big fan of Seven Little Words myself. Um, it sort of has an alternative interface. So it is a little weird to get used to at first, I think. Um, but Everett, get, throw me a couple. Uh, the Blind Drive, there is a lot of foul language. Uh, oh, yeah. Not, not great for kids, but a lot of fun for adults. Right. Not great for kids. Um, the uh, Word Voyance, which is a, a brand new game uh, from Spokane. Uh, there are some indie game developers are, are looking for testers, and that's on the resource list. And I think that's soft launched in Canada actually that is it did it did yeah. I, should have, I should know that and then there are several bop it clones uh one called zany touch one called uh just uh i think it's bop it that i use for my uh people with cognitive difficulties just because you can tap you can pinch you right. can click um so again we're kind of bringing that learning element in next question i want everyone to have a have a yes. chance yes okay so it looks like we have one from ben ben you are unmuted uh, yeah. Hi. Can you uh, hear me? Okay. Hi, Ben. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. Um, that that uh, daily puzzle um, for uh, the A lady um, would that also be available for like a Google speaker? So I actually don't know if they ever made a Google version of it. Um, it they might have. See, now I'm getting the hard hitting questions. The soft ones are over. Yeah, these are the cactuses. Um, that's Cacti. right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot there. <laughs> no, no, no. You're good. I thought. Um, okay, so yeah, crossword style puzzle game for the Google Assistant. I do believe it is on um, the Google. So you might be able to say talk to puzzle of the day. Uh, I would give that a shot. See if that works. I'll give that a try. Sure. Yeah, give it a try. Let me know. Or and you can whenever. you can play the word voyance the crossword on your um your Google device as well. Just can go you? to the reason. Yeah, it plays on everything. Really? Oh yeah. well. Good to know. Uh, next question. Oh, uh, Will had a really good point, which is they're getting oh. rid of their services on June thirteenth, so all their skills are going away. Ah, that's horrible. Dang. I forgot about that. All right. Thank you, Ben. And we have a question from Mitchell. Mitchell, you are unmuted. I, uh, is that Blind Drive an app, iOS or PC? It's on and everything. You know, it's on yeah. iOS and PC. And I think Android. Okay. And do you so. know of any PC games like Archery or any of that? So uh, L-Works.net has a ton of games that i've made um another resource is audiogames.net i think was audio-games.net um, just one word is what i usually is use. one word yeah thank you i'm not good with domains uh mm -hmm. there is a cornucopia of of games um my youtube channel is you know cheap cheap promotion is a really great place to find games because you can see what i'm streaming and what i'm playing and get a good idea of if it sounds like something that might be interesting for you um plus hey more viewers are always good so Next question. We got time for about one more, I think. All right. Thank you, Mitchell. And uh, Zeese has a question. You are unmuted. Also, don't forget to unmute yourself. Yep. There we go. Hello. 
Hello. Hey there. Hello. Hello. Oh, okay. So thank you for having me. And I'm really, really glad to be with you. Actually, I wanted to join from the beginning, but you know, it's it started at 2 a.m. Now it's 3 oh, a.m. Wow. So well, thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you for you. staying up late for us. <laughs> I'm really glad. Um I hope I didn't miss a lot. <laughs> well, there will be a, an archive. So uh, what can we do for you? Sorry? Uh, I'm sorry. What's your question? Okay. So my question, since you created the first audio game as well, a side the, scroller. Yeah, I was going to say it's not the first audio game. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's the first side scroller. Okay. So you've... I mean, worked with so many kind of, I can say, engines or programming languages like Visual Basic and BGT and Python. Can you rank them? Which one was easier? From easier to oh, easiest to hardest? And which um, one has limitation, had limitations? So and, it, it would yeah. really be hard to rank because I think everyone has different sort of criterion. Visual <laughs> Basic was kind of hard. I honestly think if you're willing to learn it, I think Python is, is I don't want to say easy, but has a lot it can do. Um, BGT, of course, is no longer supported, but did allow for rapid prototyping. But I do think that there are things that could take its place. Um, but there are a lot of tools out there now. I, I hope eventually we'll have access to things like Unity and be able to use that instead. That would be great. And... Um which game like i mean that you made has i mean used bgt engines and could you use the online functionality with i mean visual basic like the online games with yeah, players I mean, visual basic could do it um swamp i think is visual basic and that runs it um but i i mean uh -huh. I, I never messed with that myself because that was i had switched by then but um i think most languages now can do online no problem it's just taking the time to learn it and become proficient with a language. And UBGT right. games, which one were they? Uh, Super Egg Hunt, I think, was one, and might be a couple others. So at this point, oh, okay. we're, I'm going to turn it over. Thank you so much for your thank question. You, thank Phil. you. Sorry, thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Not at all. Um, I think Tim is going to close us out. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And uh, I'll let you discuss employment and say goodbye to everyone. Yes, everybody. Thank you so much for attending. We we really had an awesome webinar today. Please be looking for that, that informational email that'll come out. I've got some additions to make to it. You'll get it in about 23 hours and 45 minutes. So tomorrow afternoon, please be looking for that. There's links to our YouTube channel where you can find uh, the recording of this webinar. Uh, there's all kinds of other informational links. There's the survey if you want to see us cover different stuff in, in future webinars. And if you'd like to have a look at all kinds of different uh, job listings that we have and open positions at the Lighthouse for the Blind Incorporated, you can go to lhblind.org slash jobs. So thanks again for everyone's attendance and great participation and many, many thanks to, to Liam for just sharing his, sharing his heart with stuff and also uh, just his expertise and, um, and his encouragement with all of us. This was a really cool webinar. Have any questions, you can email me. I'll be sending you an email automatically in, in uh, tomorrow afternoon. So thanks again, everyone. These do happen once a month. And uh, these are our outward facing webinars. I believe our next uh, one might be on travel skills. So please tune in next time. Uh, Liam, any last words? Last no, breath. I just want to thank you guys for having me. And it's been an honor and a pleasure. And please uh, check out my YouTube channel if you want to learn more about gaming and me. All right. And happy studies. Oh, absolutely. Ahead. And because you guys registered for this webinar, you'll be getting information about our future webinars and you can always unsubscribe if you don't want that information. But you'll you'll be hearing about next month's webinar for sure. All right, everybody. Have a great evening. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.